The Joe Rogan experience. Uh, Jamie's giving me the not sure look. Yes, uh, you and Joey Diaz talking about doing a show in in New York. Maybe Where? man. Where at? Damn, maybe brother. Really? Oh, okay. You don't want to talk about it. Yeah, no. Um, we need to find one shit. here. I got a Joey Diaz story. We're gonna do a show with me and Joey and Yoel motherfucking Romero, and he's gonna talk to him if he gets confused in in, in Spanish. Oh, that's you know, gonna be Joey's amazing, from Cuba. dude. Are you kidding me? So Joey Diaz is gonna translate. He was Joe. It's totally Joey's idea. It's Joey says, idea. But I th bro, I've been talking to him. I love this fucking guy. We'd have an amazing podcast. You and me. You throwing the questions at him. If shit gets weird, I'll come to him in Spanish. We'll understand each other better. It's a brilliant idea. This is what Joey said. He said, uh, he goes, tell him that I want to be on his podcast because he has love for Cuba. and under He understands Cuban love. Love it. I was Love like, it. That all that shit that he was doing to Luke Rockhold after he knocked him out. Bro, it's like that's back intense. Up. That's intense. Give, give me a few minutes. You just knocked me into freaking That's intense. Puerto Vierta. Give me a fucking second to get my wits about me and then kiss me on the lips or whatever the fuck you want to do it. His ability to just be <clears throat> calm and then explode is very terrifying. It's, it's only helped by him telling you he loves you. <laughs> He's he's more terrifying than ever. It's scary because he's such a nice guy outside. Dude, he is the nicest guy. He's very friendly. You Remember know? the champ and, though was like, oh yeah, that's what you do. You Whitaker, you know, Whitaker's a monster, man. You gotta go back to that Tim Kennedy fight though, man. Talking about Stoolgate. Yeah, that Tim Kennedy fight was crazy. It was like, look, I know what you're doing. It's very slick. This is very smart. I mean, this is Angelo Dundee did that to Muhammad Ali when he fought Henry Cooper in London. He got cracked with a left hook. Henry Cooper dropped him. He was in real trouble. They cut the glove, baby. Suspect. Cut that glove, baby. We got to get the other pair. Oh, it's out there in the dressing room. Be right back. It's all fair and love and, and war, my back. man. Yeah, it ain't the right <laughs> way to do it. But you gotta you gotta realize that this guy had gone through the whole amateur wrestling system as a representative of Cuba. What? The, Matt Brown and I did a podcast last week, and Matt Brown spent. Love Matt. He's a great guy and fascinating dude, man. Intense, smart motherfucker. People, Matt died. People get a chance to. He did. He he died, and they brought him back. Matt yeah. died. Yeah, you know we talked about that. I'm really? just like, did you and Court McGee both have this like creepy thing to you? Because you both crossed over to the other side, and you don't give a fuck. And how was it? Whoo! Both guys, man, you gotta beat them. They don't beat each other. You literally have to take. Or they them don't beat out. themselves, rather. No. Yeah, I mean, Matt Brown ain't beating himself. Like he's he's a human. What's he doing now? He is gonna fight Carlos Condit. Oh, that's right. He's coming back for one. Just he Ooh. ended he ended on that dope ass knockout Ooh. of Diego with the elbow, maybe yeah, behind yeah. the air, but all's fair. A little bit. A little and then bit. Yeah, I thought he was gonna ride after the sunset, and now he's fighting Carlos Condit. So he was explaining about his camp that he did in Cuba. It's an amazing story. Amazing. He spent like six weeks in Cuba. Matt Brown? Yes. His yes. white ass was in Cuba. His white ass was in Cuba with the wrestling team for six fucking weeks for one of the camps for one of his fights. He boxed in Cuba against bo Cuban boxers, and he wrestled in That's Cuba. That's a tough go. And he lived in uh, a Cuban fighter's house. They had him there, and they, How they long fed ago? him. Which fight was it that he said? <clears throat> I try to remember which fight. If you pull up his, I you were uh, pull up his record, it was fairly recently. It's I fairly recently. Be doing that, my dude, he's man. a bad motherfucker, dude. He's a bad motherfucker. Hard, though, I'm man. not. I'm not good at that. Like, I don't want anyone to lose. Like, I love Yo Romero and I love Luke, but I've been. I on, love you. I love you, gay Jesus. But I, uh, I know what those guys feel like when they lose, and there's everything on the table. I know what for Luke how he changed camps, and sometimes yeah. that's just you're on a boat and, there, and there's holes, and you think you're, if you paddle further away from the original camp, you're gonna fill these holes, and it doesn't work like that. Well, I so think maybe I know he just by him leaving, a fresh. Look, I mean, it <clears throat> might have been a good move for him, but he fought Yoel Romero. I mean, the reality is, Yoel Romero is fucking horrifying. He's horrifying. Luke can beat him. Luke yeah. can beat him. Yeah. Luke, he might be able to, but he also might be able to get hit exactly like he got hit in that fight every time they fight. Dude, it, you don't know, man. Uh, no, I, I'm saying I don't know. I've seen, I've Luke seen a better a beast. I've seen a better version of Luke. To, to me, as far as skill wise, besides Whitaker right now, he's on another level. But I look at the roster, and to me, Luke is the most complete middleweight in the world. I can even see him being the light heavyweight champion. Mm. Gustafson might give him some problems. Besides Gustafson, there, there's going to be some issues for those guys. Who knows? Maybe him going. I mean, he's been talking about an inevitable climb to 205. He might be just like Whitaker and just like. Um, 
uh, who else were we talking about? Rafael dos Anjos. Yeah, he might be he might be the, a better fighter at two hundred five. He might be he's so fucking lean, man. The the, pro- the problem there is what made Luke so great was that swagger. Like the right. people were like, oh, he's so cocky. I get that. I actually want my fighter like that. I liked how he was so arrogant and cocky. Mm. Sometimes people don't gravitate towards it, but for a guy like Luke, he just he thrived off that. And now when I see him, I, I you know I, when I his la- in the branch fight, I didn't see it as much. I thought there, that fight was a little suspect. Not not, not taking anything away from Branch, but that should have been easier for Luke. Mm-hmm. And I see the Yoel Romero fight. I just that killer instinct wasn't there. He's very. I know you have five rounds, but he would let Yoel explode and reset. When you reset, you got to go, man. You got to go. Branch might not have the best results inside the octagon, but when it comes to technical skill, he's a super high level fighter. His his skill level and his capabilities, I don't think, have matched up to all of his performances. And you saw that when he's attacking Luke. He's fucking good, man. He put him in real oh, trouble. I'm not saying he's not good. Very, oh, he's very oh, I'm good. I'm not saying that. And his no, ground no. game's very good, but it makes Luke's win even more impressive. For sure. But Branch has never, in World Series of Fighting, he kind of you know became light heavyweight champion, middleweight champion. He's a monster, right? Yeah. In the UFC, he just he hasn't found his groove yet, right? He, and he never has. Right now, I don't. You know, a lot of it's level of competition. You mm-hmm. know, his first fight in the UFC was you know boring, and then you get Luke Rockhold, which is no walk in the park. So I I do think Dave Branch is a monster. Henzo Gracie well, Black. This is Belt. his second vert round in the UFC. Remember Correct. He fought Gerald Harris and he yes. got KO'd with that crazy yes. slam from he, the he guard. He didn't have a good career that before. That was nuts. Yeah, man. That was that was it, v- crazy. But Gerald Harris is a powerful man, monster. I'm I'm just saying with, with Luke, it was this swagger when he thought he was the best in the world. Right. And he was in strike force mm-hmm. is when he got to the UFC when he was champion. Right. And then in the Bisbing fight, he gets clipped with that left hook and he has problems with the with left the left side for him. So mm-hmm. you know Bisbing lands that knocks him out. That short notice fight, he thought he was going to walk through him. Then he takes that long layoff and he's he's trying to be a male model and mm-hmm. you know arguing with the UFC. It's just in, in somewhere along the lines that he lost a little bit of swagger when he gets that back. We're in good form. Well, um, I'm curious to see what his journey with Henry Hooft, where that comes up, because they've been they how about how long have they been together now? Like a year? Maybe a year. Yeah, a he year. moved out there. Henry's an interesting coach, man. He's a fucking he's powerful one of the best. guy. He's a very powerful guy. You know, but you know what he doesn't have is DC and Kane Velasquez right, and right, Khabib right. And, and Josh Thompson and mm-hmm. this, these monsters. You're surrounded by just these monsters. Who's yeah. he training with? And ha- has he addressed that left side where he keeps getting hit, you know, mm-hmm. which what put him out? You always left. left. Yeah. The two lefts. Two lefts. That uppercut Oof. was like a free for all. Like oh. Mark Gardner, get a little closer. You got to get a yeah. little closer. That would have been so hard to get. You don't have your up, Romero just fucking right. think about it. It's hitting as smash. hard as you can. Yeah. With your, your Romero smash. Literally, yeah. he's punching a human as hard as they can. I didn't think it was a bad stoppage because he had his head up when he went down, and you got to give one guy a chance to hit him. Now, looking at it after the fact, you go, man, I wish he didn't get hit with that uppercut. The fight was already over. But in the moment, in real time, what I if agree. it doesn't happen? What I'm if talking he doesn't shit. Hit him? Yeah, yeah, with Mark Goddard, I, I hear you. Unless he ran up four two forty, you're not getting over. I it. think it's a perfect stoppage. I mean, I think the first one, you don't really stop it yet. You got to see what's going on. Let's Is flatline be this okay? motherfucker. Let's but you don't flatline know. him. You never know. I hear you. We right? do that one. You kind of know. know. Kinda, but after the fact, we're saying that. <laughs>